And uh, uh, my commitment today is uh, to speak about the digital face support uh, with progesterone and the optimization of uh, window of, uh, of implantation in uh, our cycle. Uh, as we know, uh, the process of implantation is depending on uh, several factors for uh, 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 modification uh, during differentiation of the embryo and modification during differentiation of the endometrium. That interface depends uh, mostly from the production of progesterone. Uh, and uh, we know that uh, the uh, efficiency of implantation in human uh, uh, are very, very different from other species. So uh, also uh, the uh, uh, experiment uh, related to the uh, implantation cannot uh, uh, have advantage from uh, comparative uh, biology. Uh, uh, could you go over? Uh, could you go? Okay. Okay, again. <clears throat> Good. Okay. So, uh, the, coming back to the physiology, the production of uh, uh, progesterone uh, from corpus luteum uh, uh, begin uh, to decline 9 uh, 11 days after ovulation. Estrogen uh, is believed to play a role in luteolasis uh, of the corpus luteum. Uh, um, the estradiol injected uh, in the uh, ovary uh, uh, induces uh, luteolasis, while no effect is noted uh, when estradiol injection uh, uh, is injected in the contralateral ovary. Uh, the absence uh, of estrogen receptor in human luteal cell does not support the role of endogenous uh, estrogen in corpus luteal uh, regression. Uh, mostly prostaglandin appear, appear to be luteolytic in uh, uh, non-human primates and, and in women too, uh, and uh, they exert effect via uh, synthesis of endothelium. Oxytocin and vasopressin exert a lutotropic effect via autotropin paracin mechanism, and uh, uh, LH ability to downregulate its own receptor may also play a role in termination of luteal phase. Um, uh, the, the, the adequacy of luteal phase uh, is uh, uh, very important uh, to promote uh, uh, the uh, implantation and. Uh, uh, the complete pro process of implantation. Can get over? Hello? Can get on? Okay. Here you can see uh, what, what is the uh, efficiency uh, of uh, uh, the uh, single step on the, in IDF. Uh, uh, according to the cycle start uh, after the transfer, the, the big gap that is uh, between transfer and uh, uh, implantation. That because, uh, uh, as we know, uh, we have an efficiency of about uh, 25% uh, uh, versus the 80% for instance in the mouse. Could, could go uh, on? Okay. Uh, could you go on uh, again? Okay, so in the, in the, in the implantation uh, uh, is classically divided uh, in, uh, uh, in, three, in three single steps that are addition, penetration, uh, and invasion. Hello? Hello? Some voice, I can, be, I can hear the, some voice uh, under the, the presentation. Uh, uh, the the uh, these single steps are depending on some product of the endometrium, which uh, interact with uh, uh, the um, with uh, the embryo itself, and are depending from progesterone. Basically, progesterone have uh, uh, this uh, uh, this uh, uh, action uh, anti proliferative antagonist to estrogens because uh, uh, stop the proliferation of estrogens prime the endometrium. Uh, make uh, vascular changes uh, with uh, a big proliferation during uh, the proliferation, proliferative phase and uh, with change of size and the shape of the vessels uh, during the progesterone production, just to be able to support uh, uh, with maternal, maternal blood supply the expanded blastocyst uh, as uh, uh, is penetrated. Endometrial preparation to nidation, and we will see 
more uh, in detail what's happened, uh, reduction of uterine contraction and inhibition of mother embryos toxicity on embryonic trophoblastin. Uh, here in the right side of the slide, you can see uh, the morphological modification of the endometrium made from uh, uh, progesterone. And that uh, morphological modification that were uh, you know, described since a long time, 70 years ago from uh, Noyes, are criteria that still now pathologists may use in, uh, in uh, looking for the endometrium. Uh, but behind that is morphological modification, we have biochemical modification and also genetic modification. Could you go on, please? Uh, when uh, when uh, the uh, uh, expanded biases, uh, blastocysts, uh, enter into, uh, into the stroma of the endometrium, cytotrophoblasts differentiate uh, in three different syncytotrophoblasts. Uh, the first one is the villus syncytotrophoblast uh, that is uh, uh, hormonally active and produce ACG. Uh, the second one is the anchoring trophoblast. Uh, it is uh, an extra villus anchoring uh, trophoblast cell columns that enter in the uh, endometrium itself and the invasive uh, uh, intermediate uh, trophoblast. Uh, the, uh, all these uh, different uh, trophoblasts make the difference in completing the implantation or in uh, fail the implantation process, depending on uh, which one of these uh, syncytotrophoblasts is uh, more developed uh, uh, until the end. May you have the next slide, please? <clears throat> uh, it's it's uh, quite uh, important to, to uh, understand when, that, uh, when we have the progesterone both produced endogenously or administered uh, uh, exogenously, we have progesterone that circulate inside the lumen of the vessels as a protein bound, uh, mostly. At 98% steroid hormones circulate as protein bound, while uh, only 2% is able to cross the capillary of the uh, endometrium in the functional zone and to enter in, uh, in the stroma and uh, uh, stroma cell and the epithelial cell giving the uh, nuclei information. Uh, uh, with this information, uh, glands began uh, uh, start to produce a lot of proteins and uh, stromal cells with uh, the uh, vessels uh, produce protein they trastudate in the lumen cavity. The lumen cavity at that point have a certain uh, layer of fluid which contain, uh, we, we can see in the, in the bottom of this slide, in the, in the study of Bayer, uh, this band of electrophoresis of the fluid collected from the lumen cavity uh, at the window of implantation at time. Uh, and uh, in this uh, electrophoretic band, we, we have the key uh, proteins important to uh, implants. Uh, but that's happen when progesterone is produced or administered adequately for time and for quantity. May I have the next slide? Uh, progesterone uh, induced the majority of the biochemical modification of the process called the decidualization. Uh, the process is consisting in uh, differentiating mesenchymal uh, indifferentiated cells into stromal cell or decidual cell depending on the presence or the absence of progesterone. Progesterone act through a thousand growth factor that is depending on its own adequate production. Uh, here you can see in vitro the cell counter of mesenchymal cell that go to the sigmal cell. Uh, uh, without the sigmal cell that enlarge their shape and is start to produce uh, a lot of uh, protein, there is no decidualization, there is no pregnancy, uh, there is no continuation of pregnancy. May I have the next slide, please? Uh, here you can see more clearly what we're talking about. Uh, this uh, content of this band are produced from the glands according to three to six days of progesterone, as well as the, the, the formation of pineapples uh, that uh, appear just here, 
uh, exactly in the wind of our implantation. So we have, uh, re um, reassuming, uh, we have uh, in the in the teaser in interface, we have pinopode appearance, we have the, the secretion of glands and transudation of stromal cells. In this uh, uh, filmic uh, uh, layer of fluid, we have all the substance they participate to give uh, adhesion to the blastocyst and, uh, and uh, activate proteolytic enzyme that are in, uh, in the blastocyst to, uh, to displace epithelial cells, uh, luminal epithelial cells, and to cross the basement membrane of the, uh, uh, of the epithelium. So uh, without uh, progesterone, all these biochemical phenomena does not occur. Uh, you have the next slide, please. Okay, <laughs> and, and the next, as we know, uh, uh, yes, uh, as we know, uh, the progesterone uh, um, should, be, should be administered to support the luteal phase um, in assisted reproductive uh, uh, cycle uh, where we use uh, a, uh, a generation uh, analog. Uh, the uh, luteal phase support should be done uh, uh, when we before uh, have checked if progesterone at the trigger is less than 2.5, 2.7, according to uh, Ernesto Bosch study. Uh, because uh, if uh, we uh, support with progesterone in a system in which we have already progesterone more than 2.5, uh, uh, 2.7 nanogram per milliliter, we have already started the desodalization and we uh, dissociate what is the window of implantation. And that means that we have a, a, a strong reduction in the successful load IBS. Next uh, uh, slide, please. Uh, when, uh, when uh, we use uh, uh, the uh, a ACG uh, versus no treatment uh, in down regulated cycle, we can see that we have uh, uh, a significant increase in pregnancy by using uh, the support of luteal phase with progesterone or with uh, ACG with an evidence level uh, 1A. Next slide. Uh, when uh, progesterone is uh, administered, uh, uh, here we have uh, a slide that is of uh, Rogerio Lobo, a nose slide. We have uh, a circulating level that are very high if you administer intramuscular progesterone, while you have a very low progesterone level if you uh, give progesterone by vaginal or, or, or uh, oral route. Uh, Next slide. So uh, we have a different chance to uh, support with progesterone luteal phase. Uh, we have uh, oral progesterone that we know uh, that is uh, uh, not truly effective in uh, assisted reproductive technology because uh, uh, different route means different metabolites. We have more 3-alpha and 3-beta, and we have more allopregnanolol, uh, if you go. And we have uh, more metabolites that are also hypnotic, but uh, doesn't have a, a strong effect on desodalization. Why? Vaginal, intramuscular, and subcutaneous uh, are, as a fact, very similar. Uh, when we, uh, we administer the uh, vaginal one, that have, uh, have the effect to... Uh, uh, to use the first uterine pass effect without the first liver pass effect, we will see what's, uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, we, have, we avoid also uh, the pain and the abscesses that we may have with the use of intermassular that have the same effect of vaginal. So vaginal seems uh, uh, to be now the gold standard. And when we administer 45 milligrams per day, we have a circulating level of 4.44. <coughs> <coughs> When we give uh, 90 milligrams per day, we have uh, uh, mean uh, levels of uh, about uh, nine nanograms. And, uh, and when we use uh, twice per day, 
we have about uh, 11, 12 uh, uh, nanograms per milli milliliters. But even if the level seems to be uh, quite low, next slide, Uh, even it seems to, uh, quite low, we have to think about uh, uh, the uh, pharmacokinetic of vaginal administration. Here you can see in the, in the left side the diffusion of uh, uh, radioactive progesterone in one uh, uh, extracorporeally perfused uterus. And we can see that we have first the first pass through the uterine tissue. <coughs> and then go in circulation. So we have high concentration in the tissue and low concentration in the, in the, uh, in the blood. But we don't care about the blood the concentration, we care about the, the uh, uh, concentration inside to the, uh, to the uterine tissue. And also, when we uh, administer uh, one oral uh, steroid, not only progesterone, even uh, estrogen, uh, that enter through the portal vein in the liver, which extract about 80% of the steroid by uh, sulfur conjugation, and, uh, and uh, again came out what uh, it remained uh, through the hepatic vein. Uh, why? When we give uh, a progesterone or other steroid in non-oral administration, with, so uh, intramuscular, transvaginal, whatever, it entered through, uh, through the hepatic artery uh, contemporarily to the uterine artery. So before it go to the uterus and then it go to the liver to be catabolized as a soft con sulfur conjugated. Uh, may I have the next slide? Here you can see the experimental demonstration by uh, vertical slice of the uterus after uh, administration of radioactive uh, uh, progesterone uh, in extracorporeal perfusion of the uterus. And you can see that this distribution here, we have a, a, a strong distribution of radioactive progesterone just in the external layer of the myometrium and in the endometrium with high concentration of 2.6 nanogram uh, per uh, gram, uh, wet gram tissue and 1.8 nanogram for weight gram tissue in the, in the low uh, concentrated part. May I have the next leg? And that's uh, served to completely uh, uh, exert the effect of decidualization. Another, another effect of progesterone, may I have a, the, the, could you push the next slide, the movie? Could you, could, no. Could you go over? Okay, okay. Uh, and uh, uh, the uterine contraction, contra uterine contraction uh, is, uh, is done mostly. Estrogen are uh, uterine contractants, and uh, progesterone is uterine relaxant. May I have the next slide? Okay. Uh, could you push again? Okay, so when we, when we work with uh, 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 an extra portfolio perfused uterus and we put an electrode on the muscles, uh, uh, silver, silver electrode, and the probe from the pressure inside to the, uh, to the uh, lumen uh, cavity, uh, giving a stradiol and measuring contraction uh, here and measuring electrical activity here, we can, we can see how uh, increase of activity we have by uh, in injecting extra dial in the system. Why? When we add progesterone, both mechanical and electrical activity are down regulated from progesterone. We well, have the next slide, please. Here there is uh, the uh, uh, frequency of uh, contraction of the uterus during the menstrual cycle. And you can see here detected by uh, yeah, <coughs> frequency of uterine contraction by ultrasound uh, here by measuring intrauterine pressure. You can see that we have the, the highest uh, number of contraction at the periovulatory time and we uh, decrease this contraction during the uh, luteal phase according to progesterone production. Now you have the next slide. And uh, according to the uh, 
the old paper of Renato Fanchan, we have a, a reduction in uh, uh, implantation rate as uh, the number of contraction per minute increase. So this is uh, a negative correlation from contraction and implantation. Next slide, please. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we arrive to the uh, clinical effect. Progesterone versus no support in down-regulated cycle is uh, demonstrated to be highly effective. Uh, next slide. Due to phase support, uh, uh, we have the use of ACG uh, can uh, aggravate the uh, OEHSS and progesterone should be the preparation to, uh, of choice in high-risk women. Uh, the support of luteal phase should be done by progesterone mostly. Uh, next slide. Uh, of course, both uh, uh, progesterone and HCG during luteal phase are associated with high care rate or applied birth rate or ongoing pregnancy than uh, placebo. Next one. And how uh, we have to use uh, progesterone. Here we can see a meta-analysis between no progesterone and progesterone in half cycle with down the regulation of, uh, with down regulation. And we have that uh, uh, is evident the uh, uh, advantage by using progesterone. Next one. Uh, when, when we use, uh, we should use a progesterone, the date of pick up, or the day uh, of embryo transfer. Uh, here in this uh, meta-analysis, there are no uh, strong difference. Next slide. And also uh, a progesterone administration intramuscular uh, on the day of pickup or 12 hours before the pickup. And uh, uh, we have uh, the uh, evidence that is uh, uh, quite better to use uh, the day of pickup. Next slide. Vaginal versus oral, completely advantage of vaginal. Next one. Uh, the use, of, as we told before, the use of progesterone versus the use of progesterone plus ACG, there is no difference in terms of uh, uh, pregnancy outcome and uh, there is more risk for hyperstimulation. Next slide. Uh, how long we have to use uh, uh, progesterone support of the, in a uh, in, uh, in, uh, heart uh, down-regulated cycle? Seven versus four weeks doesn't show any difference. So uh, it should be uh, an alpha to use the fourth, uh, the fourth week. Is uh, still to demonstrate if progesterone, like in, uh, 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 in, uh, in uh, the third trimester, is able to reduce uh, uh, contraction in a pregnant uterus and to, uh, uh, to uh, reduce the uh, abortion. That is uh, a question that is uh, still open. There are some prerequisites in physiology, but we don't have the clinical uh, uh, evidence. Next slide. Uh, Intramuscular administration versus vaginal administration, there is no difference, uh, equally uh, efficient. Next slide. Uh, here, uh, when, when we have uh, not an, in art cycle, but uh, in a luteal phase defect, uh, the use of progesterone uh, to support the luteal phase uh, in luteal phase defect doesn't have uh, an evident uh, efficacy. Next slide. The, uh, the the supplementation of vaginal progesterone on, on day six after pickup or on day three after pickup uh, doesn't have doesn't show a significant difference, but uh, it seems to be very close uh, the uh, the uh, advantage of uh, vaginal progesterone 
three days after the uh, Picard. Next slide. I think that uh, progesterone should be considered the, the, uh, the luteal phase supplementation in that cycle uh, with, with the down regulation. And uh, I believe that uh, the use of progesterone uh, is a still a matter of uh, uh, supplementary uh, studies because uh, we know that window of hope implantation uh, with, an, with an adequate production of uh, progesterone is uh, around, uh, is uh, on 24 to 32 hours. Uh, we should uh, arrive to use progesterone and to, uh, uh, to enlarge the window of implantation from one day to three, four days to improve significantly the outcome pregnancy in our uh, cycle with down regulation. Thank you very much.